Hello, my friends. In discussing avoidable blindness, we've really addressed many issues related to cataract, glaucoma, retina. But is there a space to discuss refractive surgery? Let's find out. Today, we talked to Dominic Von Planta, COO of Schwind. Dominic, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Hi, Matt. Hi. Great to, to see you. here. Yeah, fantastic. So Dominic, I was just wondering, you know, you've been in the industry a while now. What are your thoughts on avoidable blindness worldwide? Um, it's always a question, let's say, how you define uh, blindness. Of course, uh, usually I think it's defined as a, a CDVA uh, below 2400 or something like that. And uh, of course, uh, let's say uh, extreme uncorrected uh, refractive errors are usually included uh, as well. Definitely a, a main challenge based on studies let's say i understand cataract is 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 one of the main causes uh, followed by glaucoma and uh, uncorrected refractive errors uh, amd diabetic retinopathy let's say refractive corrections are let's say our main business uh, uh, from schwind uh, we also look at let's say the other uh, 100 million cases of, of moderate or severe uh, vision uh, uh, impairment. Fully blind is, is one big challenge. Most of the time this, uh, this uh, let's say, severe vision impairments uh, is then often leading to blindness also. It's a big challenge because it really takes able either child or, or adult out of the workforce, uh, which could be able to, to do a lot of things but can't because of blindness. And especially if you look at children, it's particularly challenging because they miss out on education most of the time uh, if they have refractive errors. So it's definitely something which uh, we need to address, let's say, as, as a community. You know, that's a great point, Dominic. And uh, I'm curious, you know, in terms of the refractive procedures that we see worldwide, that a number of them do, in fact, cause people to then become... Uh, more productive, cause them to uh, optimize their vision in terms of times when, yeah, they perhaps they weren't going blind, but they were maybe going legally blind, for example. How many of the patients out there that get refractive surgery are, let's say, in need? And if, we, if we take the, the children example again, uh, I understand that roughly 80% of information which children are learning is presented visually. If the, the children don't have access uh, to this 80%, of course, uh, this is going to impact their, their chances uh, for, for the future. And then if you go uh, to, to adult uh, people, um, let's say being able to work, of course, working in, a, in more skilled uh, jobs, uh, whenever you need to read and everything, I mean, uh, blindness or, or even partial blind blindness or or uncorrected refractive error is impacting you. Many, let's say, especially less developed countries, sometimes those challenges are not uh, identified uh, early enough or let's say not properly identified and then people just live with the impact, let's say, without notifying that they could do something about it. You know, there are many companies in the vision care space and, you know, as I've been doing these interviews, I've also kind of wondered, um, you know, if there's any obligation on the companies in our field to try to give back to the community of vision care. Um, what do you think and what do you think about charitable efforts in our vision care space? I mean, it's a good question. It's an obligation. I, I would say it's not necessarily an obligation, but I think most of the time, yes, it comes with it uh, to, to, let's say, have the opportunity to contribute beyond, um, let's say, what we are contributing on a daily basis by providing uh, devices, uh, let's say, to refractive surgeons. And for sure, I think, for especially for developing countries, uh, I think uh, charities are an important uh, building block of, of uh, uh, making advances in, in, uh, 
in eye care because uh, it's, of course, you could say, okay, it's it's government's responsibility, but as we know, uh, in many of those countries, the governments don't necessarily have the possibilities or, or the, the um, infrastructure to take care uh, of all those medical challenges. Those people live in remote rural areas and private initiatives, especially charities, are a great vehicle uh, to, to transport and support uh, those local communities. When preparing for our interview today, I thought to myself, you know, that in talking about issues of avoidable blindness, it's easy to discuss issues like cataract, glaucoma, and even retina. But refractive is, is a little bit more challenging. And yet at the same time, I find that when, when I'm discussing this with you today, I am finding new insights um, into this space with your suggestions. So it seems to me that by your example, every person within ophthalmology does have something to contribute to you know, avoidable blindness or the management, the, the prevention of that. Would you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. I think, I mean, it's not as um, obvious, as you say, as, as a cataract or, or a AMD or glaucoma. Uh, but um, at the end, I think we tend to forget just yes, how big also the impact can be of, of just uh, uncorrected refractive errors, um, be it on, on the well-being of people only, or let's say, as I mentioned before, which, which can add, then have side effects, which are not only related to and corrected refractive errors, but also partially related to that. And, um, and we, we also tend to forget that over a lifetime, uh, having a laser vision correction is the cheaper option than having uh, glasses replaced uh, uh, in a, on a regular basis. So it it's, uh, it's also has a, a cost benefit for patients uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and something else that comes to mind is that a lot of people in our industry are now speaking about the myopia epidemic or pandemic that's upon us. It seems that, you know, by being able to treat myopia earlier on, I, guess, I suppose, especially advanced stages of myopia, that prevents certain risk factors for playing out down the line, which some of those risk factors could lead to more severe conditions and I suppose blindness. So um, perhaps as we're talking about children, uh, but especially just earlier on, uh, making some kind of refractive correction could be helpful down the line, would you say? Um, absolutely, yes. I think, of course, children, is, is since they are still in, in development, um, let's say laser vision correction is not necessarily... But for sure, I mean, as you mentioned, um, they're not treating those smaller refractive errors at an earlier stage, be it with laser vision correction or glasses or, or contact lenses, can lead then to, to more uh, evolving uh, myopia. Um, and at the end, it's also, uh, m most of the time, let's say treatment and prevention goes a bit hand in hand. So at the end, once we start thinking about how to treat the challenge, uh, we raise awareness, awareness for the challenge, and, and then those, those children also become aware and, and young, uh, let's say youngsters become aware that what they need to do uh, to be able to, to reduce, let's say, the progression of, of myopia. Dominic, thank you so much for joining the conversation today. I hope you felt that it was helpful to advance our, um, our movement against avoidable blindness. Absolutely. It was great. Thanks. Thanks for the invitation. No, I think...